All right, on to lesson six practice problems. Number one, find the area. All right, so we've got this irregular shape. It's a composite figure. It's made up of other shapes. So I, I think the strategy you want to do is, you know, I mean, you can kind of follow any strategy here. Um, my usually, you know, I usually advise my students to make it simple. You know, try not to complicate it too much, you know, and sometimes uh, people break it up into too many sections complicated but um, I, I really I'm, I'm going to kind of do in between here I, it doesn't matter but what I am going to do is I'm going to do this I see this is what my wandering eye sees I see that rectangle right there see that All right I'll fill in the dimensions just a bit see that rectangle that's pretty obvious what the other rectangles are all right, there's one. All right, and then we have our bottom one. Got that right there. So I think um, I think three rectangles is probably good. You know, I would say. All uh, right, so let's do it. We've got. Um, let's figure out the area. So. The, the purple one, the, the top one there, that's two by one, right? That's going to be two by one, so that means that the area of that is going to be two. Two square centimeters. All right, uh, and then for uh, the middle one, the red one there, um, we need to know... We need to know what this complete length is because area is length times width. And it looks like you know this this part right here is three. This part's three. So three plus three makes six. So you got six times two there. Six times two is twelve. So that's twelve square centimeters. And then the bottom part right there, um, we've got the length and we need the width. Oh, the width is four, right? It's four. No, it's not. It's not that four is four is from here to here. Four is from here to here. But one thing that's helpful if you look over here, you'll notice that is two. That's two. So that's two right there. So that means this must be two. Because two plus two is four. So three times two is I think thirty-two. No, it's six. So you got six square centimeters. Now add all that up, 2 plus 12 plus 6, and that's 20. So if we just found the area of that polygon. It's area equals 20 square centimeters right there. And I think that problem right there was just getting you kind of prepared for you know future problems where you're going to have to take these composite shapes or other shapes, perhaps, put it together, you know, and look at the accumulation, accumulation, like the, uh, you know, the total, the sum of all the, the different areas, perhaps. All right, number two, draw polygons on the map that could be used to approximate the area of Virginia. Polygons. All right, so I'm assuming it wants us to do more than one polygon, but... I don't know. I, what I see, let me kind of move this over here. Uh, what I kind of see, and it's not perfect. Uh, if you want to figure out the area, what I see is just one big polygon. I see this right here and this. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, so you got that. So we got, we got a triangle there. Now that triangle, if you look at it, uh, it's bigger than Virginia, right? So we need to take away some of that, some of that other stuff in there. Um, so what could we do? I, I mean, I, th I think this border right here, that border's not too bad in terms of the triangle. We've got just as much to the east of it as there is to the west of it, you know, in terms of the overlap. So I would say that's pretty safe. I think it's that. It's this northwest border right here. 
that is a little trickier and I don't know I mean what can we do I I mean I'm hesitant to say like that is a half circle because it's not a half circle I mean I guess you could I mean you'd have to be really using your imagination there but I would bet you know just like not it's not perfect but I'm just going to make that a triangle roughly that shape because we're estimating we're estimating and so maybe like this one right here make a triangle right there and this one's kind of a a rectangle and this one's kind of a another rectangle I guess if you want to do that now those are all the, all those things I just did right there those are areas that you would want to think of as negative areas those those are spaces negative space you know those are parts that you want to take away from the overall area so um, which kind of leads into the next question number uh, the question B here says which measurements would you need to know in order to calculate the approximation of the area of Virginia label the size of the polygon whose measurements you would need Okay, you aren't being asked to calculate. Well, if we want to find the big, the you know the largest triangle, the first thing I drew there, um, you're going to need the base of that triangle. So from there to there. And so on Virginia, that's a pretty straight line, isn't it? Um, I don't think that's perfect, but that's that southern border is pretty straight. It's pretty linear. So that's the base, and then you need the height. Now, uh, the height, you know, the height has to be perpendicular to the base. So you can't say this or this is the height, you know. Those are not perpendicular to the base. So it's got to be perpendicular. So we need the height there. I'm going to put H for height. So we would need that. And then for those other shapes, when it comes to the other shapes, we're going to need... We're gonna need some bases, right? We're gonna need some. We're gonna need this. We need to know what that is. We need to know what the height. We need to know what that distance is. And uh, you know, I looked at this map. It doesn't have a scale on it. You know, sometimes where it says like, you know, one inch equals 150 miles or something like that. That's not on there. But I bet we could. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of maps out there where we can kind of do that and and look at the scale on that map and kind of estimate what it is but we would need this we would need this base uh, we would need to know what that height is right there I would need to know what this length is we need to know what that is right here we need to know some of those things but uh, I think that would probably be pretty close I mean if you wanna I guess we could think of this as a triangle as well you could take that away so you need the base and height of that triangle yeah, but that's um, that's pretty good. Would have been better if this problem was Tennessee. You know, Tennessee looks like a parallelogram. You know, maybe that's maybe that's because it's too easy. You know, it's too easy. Or Colorado, <laughs> or Wyoming. Those are just rectangles, right? That's easy. So for B. Which measurements would you need to know in order to calculate an approximation of the area of Virginia? Oh, where did that? Why am I reading that again? Three. Jada's bike wheel have uh, her wheels have a diameter of 20 inches. How far does she travel if the wheels travel or rotate 37 times? All right. So um, this this is asking circumference. You know, some derivation of, of circumference. And so the diameter of the wheel is 20. And circumference equals pi times diameter. That's what it equals there. And uh, the diameter is 20. So I'm just going to keep this in terms of pi. I'm going to say that the circumference of the wheel is 20 pi. Okay? It's 20 pi. And then her wheel turns 37 times. So we could just do 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. That's, that's a pain in the butt. Or we could just do 20 times 37, right? 20 times 37, which is 
I believe, 2 million. No, it's uh, 74. So I'm going to put 74 pi <clears throat> inches. So that's, that's in terms of pi. Right there, if that's what it's asking. In terms of pi, you could say 74 pi inches. That's good. All right, uh, if we want to know like an actual number, let's work it out. We can do 74 times 3.14, or 22 sevenths, or just hit your pi button on your calculator and just do that. So 3.14 times 74 is going to be 232.36 inches. Number four, the radius of Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. The equator is a circle, well, the equator is a circle around the Earth, dividing it into northern and southern hemispheres. The center of the Earth is also the center of the equator. Uh, what is the length of the equator? All right, so this is just a circumference question again. This is a circumference question, so, um, so we're looking for the equator. The equator is a circle. <clears throat> right here, the center of the circle is like the center of the Earth. And um, the radius is directly given. It's no mystery that it's 6,400 kilometers. And so if you want to find the diameter, if I figure out the diameter, that's going to be 6,400 times 2, which is I'm going to write that down now. That is going to be 12,800 kilometers. Okay. Kilometers there. And uh, so now let's just do circumference formula. Circumference is pi, right? Circumference is pi times diameter. So let's just do 3.14 times 12,800. And I got 40,192 kilometers. Which I think is like, I'm estimating, I think that's like 25,000 something feet. Could be wrong if you just figure out how many. Uh, or not feet, what did I say feet? 25,000 miles. I could be wrong. It's somewhere around there. All right, number five. Here are several recipes for sparkling lemonade. For each recipe, describe how many tablespoons of lemonade it takes per cup. All right, so lemonade mix per cup of water. So um, the thing that I always kind of get is that it's basically asking for the unit rate here, right? lemonade per cup. So how many tablespoons of lemonade per cup? So that's like for one cup. So that means we're going to take lemonade mix and you're going to divide that by water, by the amount of water. Sparkling water because this is fancy lemonade. I cannot stand sparkling water. This messes with my senses. Not very good. In my opinion, I'm sure it's a lot. And I, I always find, no matter where I'm at, I always find St. Saint, Saint Croix or whatever, that they're always partially drank. I never see it, I've never found a, part, a fully drank sparkling, like a can of sparkling soda or sparkling water. Never in my life. Maybe that's, that's a confirmation bias right there, but that's just, that's just my take on it. <laughs> No one ever drinks the whole thing. They always leave a little bit left at the bottom. Maybe because it's flat. I bet you that's why. But anyhow, uh, four tablespoons of lemonade mix and 12 cups of sparkling water. 
And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do, let's do four. The pen's not working. Four divided by 12. Now, 4 divided by 12. Now, if you do that in your calculator, you're going to get 0.3333333, um, which I don't like to put. That's not a great answer to put down. Let's leave it as a fraction. One third, right there. So, 4 divided by 12 is one third. It's one third. So, what that means is it's going to take one third, uh, what is it, tablespoon? I think that's a symbol for tablespoon, TBSP. Uh, per cup of fancy water, okay? So one third tablespoon per cup. That's what that comes out to. All right, and then for this one, I'm just gonna kind of approach this one the same way. Uh, four tablespoons of lemonade mix and six cups of sparkling water. So we're gonna do four divided by six. Now four divided by six is two thirds, two thirds. All right, so that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put that is two-thirds of a tablespoon of lemonade mix per cup of water. That's bad grammar right there, but whatever. All right, three tablespoons of lemonade mix and five cups of sparkling water. Now, if you do use your calculator on this one, this one comes out nice. I just don't like it when you get repeating... Putting down a repeating decimal, you know, doing that as an answer, just doesn't cut it for me. It's not a very elegant way to express your answer, although it isn't wrong. It's not wrong to do that, but it just doesn't always tell the whole story, I guess, in my opinion. So three-fifths, you know, three-fifths, if you do that three divided by five, that's 0. 0.6. So 0. 0.6, you know. But, uh... Yeah, so you, you can just say that that is... Now, I've never seen anything that measures 0.6 of a tablespoon, but whatever. one six tablespoon per cup, right? And then right here we're given fractions, one-half tablespoon of lemonade mix and three-fourths cup of sparkling water. So I'm going to make a complex fraction out of this. So one half over three fourths. It's a complex fraction. You know where the numerator is a fraction, right? The numerator is a fraction, and the denominator is a fraction. That's why it's called a complex fraction. And uh, let's just treat that as a division problem because that's what we've been doing all along. So we're going to do one half divided by three quarters. And then when we divide, we keep the first fraction the way it is. We change division into multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction. So you got four thirds right there. And then I'm just going to multiply left to right. One times four is four. Two times three is six. And that, that reduces down to two thirds. Okay? And that's the same as B, right? That's the same ratio as B at least. So that is going to be two-thirds of a tablespoon per single cup, okay?